Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, now I see that it's working. So thank you very much to the organizers. So uh, today I'm going to speak about you know, local thermoelectricity in a system which is based on a, a Joyson junction in which the weak link is a two-dimensional topological insulator. So first I would like to uh, acknowledge, uh, acknowledge the, um, the people involved. Sorry, I, I have to get rid of this uh, message here. Okay, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, the people involved, yes, okay. Uh, oh, so the main actor in this work is uh, Gian Michele Blasi, who was a PhD student in, in our group and then moved to as a postdoc in, in Geneva. Then Alessandro Braggio in Pisa. And then Li 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 Liliana Racea, who was here from Buenos Aires, and uh, Matteo Carrega, who is now in, uh, in Genova. So the outline of the talk is, uh, is this. I will first give a very quick introduction to thermoelectricity nanoscale just to f set the, the basic notions. Then I will say a few words about topological insulators and then I will move to the main topic which is um, non-local topological Joyson junction showing how one can get the linear thermoelectricity uh, uh, through a magnetic flux applied to the system or by applying a, a phase difference. And then I will, if I have time, I'll speak about nonlinear effect as well. So um, uh, let me first set a few, I just need a few things just to be sure that we, we are on the same page. So I'm uh, thinking about thermoelectricity in a nanoscale system. So I'm thinking about a conductor attached to two leads uh, where I can apply both voltage and temperature bias. I'm interested in the charge current and, uh, and uh, in the heat current uh, flowing through, through here. Okay. And um, uh, I, won't, uh, I won't consider phonons. So uh, I'm considering very small temperature. Phonons are out of, uh, of um, uh, are, are basically ne neglected. So the uh, quantity I'm looking at is, is the thermal power. So which is the voltage which, which uh, 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 appears across the the conductor when a temperature difference is, uh, is applied at open circuit. So I just make here, I just put here the, 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 the definition to be sure what I'm, I'm speaking about later. Also, I'm also considering a thermal conductor, which is just uh, the heat flow, the heat current produced by a temperature, a temperature difference. So a temperature <coughs> Thermoelectricity is uh, important not, oh, not by itself only, but also because one can use thermoelectric thermo effect to, uh, to, to implement a steady state uh, heat engine. So a system which uh, uses some heat coming from, uh, from, from outside. So in this case, we have a, a, hot, uh, a hot terminal here, a, a cold terminal here. Some heat is entering our system and some power is coming is coming out. So I'm interested in uh, in a heat uh, um, a heat to work uh, 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 conversion. So we know, for example, that the maximum uh, the optimal uh, uh, performance is, is quantified by the Carnot efficiency, also in these steady state engines, which just depends on the ratio between uh, the two the two temperatures. So now uh, let me be a bit more precise on this. So. Um, so I'm considering a, a, a conductor, as I said. So the, the, the simple instance is just a two-terminal conductor. So a heat en the efficiency of a t heat engine is this ratio between the power produced and the heat, um, the input heat current. Uh, in linear response, so the, the point is that the, the one can define a figure of mer merit, Zt, which is expressed in terms of this transport um, Coefficients, and that's why it's important to, uh, I mean, it's important to to um, to determine these coefficients because just in a, in a just knowing them, you you will get this uh, this this figure merit. So this figure merit just equal to the electrical conductivity, uh, thermal power to the second, and divided by the thermal conductance times temperature. So this figure merit is important because uh, just knowing it, you will. Uh, uh, you will know, for example, the maximum e e efficiency of your system, which is expressed uh, through this uh, equation here. So 
what you want is you want a large ZT. When uh, ZT is very small, the maximum efficiency is uh, zero. When ZT is very large, the maximum efficiency reaches the, the Carnot efficiency. Uh, also, you can express the efficiency at uh, maximum power with the same, uh, with the same ZT. Uh, so now, when dealing with uh, nanoscopic, uh, nanoscopic uh, systems, one can, uh, one, can, uh, one can ask some questions to ask are what, uh, um, uh, what are the, how, how quantum effects uh, affect the, the, um, the performance of a, of, a, of a heat engine. And um, so, for example, what is the role of confinement or, or quantization, or what is the role of, of, uh, of, of quantum interference? This is what... Um, you, you, you can ask when dealing with the nanoscopic system where quantum effects can be, can be important. So uh, actually in the 90s it was first realized that uh, in order to enhance, uh, in order to enhance uh, the um, uh, heat to work conversion, so in order to enhance this ZT figure merit, what is important is somehow to get, uh, to reach some energy filtering. So to have some uh, transport coefficients uh, which has uh, sharp features in the, in, in the energy. So, so, for example, the general co general, um, generalized conductivity. Uh, and here, for example, in the first paper, in this paper here, uh, they, they studied quantum wells or uh, super lattices, realizing that if you decrease the spacing between the, between the layers, you can increase ZT. In this other paper here, they realized that the optimal um, Performance is reached when when this uh, 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 this kernel here is, is a delta function. So a quantum dot, in principle, can give you the optimal the optimal. Uh, it's it's an optimal uh, uh, it engine. So there's now nowadays uh, there's a vast literature about uh, uh, about all this. Here I just mentioned a few only a few review papers on uh, on that. Uh, now, what I'm going to, in this talk, to, to focus on is, uh, is, uh, is topology and, uh, and, uh, and, and superconductivity. Topology actually in uh, what we consider is two-dimensional topological uh, insulators and how we can use to, 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 to look at uh, thermal electricity. Uh, so let me first, I've got one slide just explaining what a two-dimensional two, two topological insulator is. So basically it's a two-dimensional electronic system which has a gap in the density of state, so it's, it's, it's insulating uh, uh, in the gap, but presents pairs of uh, conducting uh, um, edge states. So for example here you have an insulator in contact with this uh, uh, two-dimensional topology insulator. Uh, the, uh, 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 the system is insulating in the gap, but you have these two uh, uh, channels, uh, uh, edge states. This edge state has got uh, uh, helicality, so they, they, they are helical in the sense that uh, uh, they um, the spin up, spin up. Uh, uh, for example, in the, in this case, uh, the propagate to the right, whereas spin down propagate uh, to the left. So the actual <coughs> the spatial relation looks like this: we have a conduction band, a valence band, and then we have two these two lines here, which represents the left going propagating uh, uh, spin up modes and the left go, uh, uh, sorry, right going propagating uh, spin up modes and left going propagating uh, spin down, spin down modes. <coughs> so this, um, this effect was uh, were, uh, found in, in w w w was predicted for, for graphene with spin up interaction or uh, um, um, mercury telluride quantum wells, but nowadays there are many, <coughs> many different system, material systems which displays this, uh, this property. So the helical uh, edge states <coughs> can, be explained, can be described by a low energy effective Hamiltonian of this kind, where uh, we have the Fermi velocity and the uh, Z, compo Z uh, Pauli, Pauli matrix. Uh, just to say that there are, as I said, many different um <coughs> Uh, material system, we have also indium arsenide, gallium uh, uh, antimonide, quantum wells, uh, and uh, also atomically thin crystal of tungsten telluride more, more, more recently. Now, 
um, people has, uh, <coughs> has uh, already uh, studied uh, uh, Joyce junction uh, with this uh, two-dimensional topology insulator inside. It is interesting because it gives rise to a strange um, current phase relation, so which is four pi, four pi periodic. <coughs> so we here yeah, I just mentioned it, the first few few papers now uh, in in the first years. Now there are of course much more, and this is a list I don't think is complete of uh, of, of experiments on the on uh, on uh, on this system here. So it's something which is uh, which people are 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 looking at in, um, nowadays. So. <coughs> Now let me come to the actual uh, system we are looking at. So we are considering a, <coughs> a two-dimensional two topological insulator, for example here, spin up going, propagating right, spin up down, propagating left. <coughs> we, are, uh, uh, we have two, two supergrating electrodes on the left and on the right, which are proximizing <coughs> the two-dimensional topological insulator, topological in, uh, insulator. <coughs> so we have a phase phi, left, phi right, on the left and on the right, supergrating phase. Uh, in addition, so this is a, a non-local setup in the sense that, that we are putting a, a, a normal probe somewhere on, uh, along, uh, along the edge, which is, which is coupled to the two edge, uh, edge states, something like a, a, a CM tip. So this probe is connected, <coughs> this probe, uh, we can have a, 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 a bias voltage, Vn, applied to it, the superconductors are, um, are grounded. The position is uh, uh, x0 between 0 and L. And what we are interested in is in the charge current flowing through the, um, the probe and the heat current, the heat current flowing uh, in, uh, in the, for example, the left uh, superconductor. <coughs> uh, we are looking at the effect of a magnetic flux threading the the junction, and also of a pure phase, phase difference. <coughs> but I will spend more time on, uh, on the effect of a magnetic flux. The temperature of, so uh, T plus delta T half is the temperature on the, of the left reservoir, of the left uh, superconductor, T minus delta T half of the right superconductor, and the, the normal uh, um, probe is a temperature T in the middle, but we see that is not very important distance temperature here. Um, so <coughs> I'm considering just uh, half uh, of, uh, of the two-dimensional so, uh, two TI. Uh, so I'm assuming that the width of the TI is very large, so the edge state on the upper side and the lower side are, are decoupled. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, the probe can be coupled to the edges in, um, with an arbitrary uh, transmission T squared, which is spin independent and uh, energy independent. With, with T squared, we can go from zero to one. So we can range, we can go from the tunneling regime to the very clean uh, regime, very clean, very clean uh, contact. So uh, the, model, the system can be modeled through a Borudo de Gen uh, Hamiltonian, where we have the particle-like uh, <coughs> excitations up here the whole like excitations down here, <coughs> and they are coupled through the, the, the order parameter, delta. <coughs> so I'm assuming an S wave, I'm assuming an S wave uh, superconductor. So um, I'm coupling spin up and spin down electrons. <coughs> delta X is um, uh, the gap in the system, which is actually a proximity induced gap. It's the gap in, uh, uh, which is induced by the superconducting electrodes uh, put on top of the of the, to the, to the TI. <coughs> so the uh, Hamiltonian H is that described by the uh, <coughs> low energy effective Hamiltonian, the one I showed before, plus <coughs> in case we are applying a magnetic flux, plus a, 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 a Doppler shift um, energy, um, which is due to, to this magnetic flux, which takes uh, this form here, which is basically a shift in the momentum uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the condensate. So now, um, uh, so we're going to see first is how this, the presence of, of this uh, Doppler shift energy will uh, impact the 
the, the, um, the transport. So uh, this is the dispersion curve where for in, 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 the, in the, proximized, uh, the proximized region, so delta is, uh, is finite, with zero uh, Doppler shift, so in the absence of a, of a, of a, of a magnetic flux. So what we see is that uh, it, there's a, a gap delta opening between spin down uh, particle and spin down holes. So these are spin down particle, these spin, spin, uh, spin up uh, particles. So a gap opens here, as it should uh, do. Then uh, what's the effect of the, of the Doppler shift? Is to shift uh, vertically the two branches in opposite, uh, in opposite directions. Uh, in such a way that uh, on the left <coughs> branch, we have a, a gap which is reduced by the, an amount epsilon delta s. So this gap here is delta minus epsilon delta s. On the right branch, the gap is increased by the same amount, uh, epsilon, uh, epsilon delta s, delta s uh, ds, sorry. And this uh, comes uh, uh, simply by the fact that uh, when uh, you are, uh, if you just look at the uh, dispersion curve uh, uh, with no superconductivity, the two uh, branches are, uh, are, uh, are shifted, uh, down and up branches are shifted down and up. And so this makes this movement, this makes this, uh, the shift of the, of the branches. So, uh, so now let's look at what is what do we expect about uh, thermoelectricity in this system. So uh, here the uh, we are applying a positive uh, uh, a Doppler shift <coughs> and uh, energy, and uh, the branch on the left is going down, on the right is going up. This is the uh, distance between zero and uh, and um, uh, so this, this, this is the gap on the, of, for the left branch. And uh, what we see is that we can reach, uh, we can have a, a, a thermoelectric effect. So just applying a temperature difference. So with Vn equal to zero, applying a temperature difference, we can have uh, a thermoelectric effect coming from the fact that we, we have uh, holes. So this is the whole branch. We have, we have holes, uh, um, hot holes coming from uh, from the left, and the cold um, uh, particles coming from the right, which are uh, described by this uh, particle uh, uh, dispersion. This can, uh, this can happen when the temperature is of the order of this gap, of course. So when the temperature is, is of the order, this branch starts to, to be active. A term it is in a, to a some current, we expect some current flowing through the normal through the normal probe. Uh, uh, so we describe this using the, the, the scattering approach. So the system is actually three terminals, so it contains three terminals, but uh, uh, we have just two uh, relevant affinities, so biases, which is fir first is Vn, the bias here, the voltage bias, the probe, and the second is the temperature difference between the two superconductors, delta T. Uh, so uh, what we are going to use is, uh, is, a, par is, um, um, is a partial, let's say, on saga matrix. It's a non-local saga matrix, two by two, which connects the two, which relates the two, uh, uh, the two relevant uh, uh, currents, so the charge current in the probe and the heat current in the superconductor, to the two affinities, Vn and delta T. So we are getting rid of some uh, of... Uh, uh, of some, uh, some equation, but these are the, the, the important one, uh, the one we are interested in. So uh, here I'm assuming that we are in the, uh, in the linear regime. Delta T, delta T, small delta T is going to be is much smaller than, than T. So in this way, we can define this non-local Onsager, Onsager matrix, which, which is a bit weird, weird because, for example, we, what we find is that L21 is equal to minus L12, which is, uh, which is not the, the, the usual uh, um, symmetry one expects. But this comes from the fact that this is incomplete. The whole Onsager matrix will have the, 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 proper, the, the proper symmetries. Uh, uh, okay, now we can, we can see the first, uh, we can see first the, the effect one, uh, when one calculates, for example, L12. L12 is these terms which gives the uh, thermoelectric effect. So current 
charge current due to a uh, temperature difference. Uh, no, temperature difference between the two superconductors. Uh, what, you, what you find is that, uh, so this is the plot of L12 normalized in some, in, in some way as a function of the uh, um, um, Doppler shift energy normalized with, with delta and uh, as a function here of the transmission of the, of the coupling with the, with the probe. So what one sees is that uh, one has an effect when uh, epsilon ds divided by delta is, uh, is of order one. Okay, and this, and this makes sense because it's when, uh, it's when uh, 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 the first branch, the, the branch on the left uh, or, or on the right, goes, goes down and uh, uh, close to the, uh, to the origin. So one, one has, uh, for example, in this case, so this was positive delta S, and one get a positive, uh, uh, a positive signal here. And for negative delta S, the branches move uh, in an opposite way, and one gets uh, this, uh, this, other, this other value, a negative. And one sees that uh, uh, the effect increases by increases, uh, increasing uh, the coupling. So the tunneling, uh, the, the in, in the tunneling regime, there is little, there is little um, effect. Uh, so, what, so in this case, I, I took a length which, uh, which is of the order of the, of the coherence length. <coughs> so one, just to understand a bit more, one can see what happens to L11. Uh, so for example, all, 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 on the electrical conductance. The electrical conductance looks like, uh, looks like this. Again, as a function of the energy, of the Doppler shift and the and transmission. And one sees that there are two peaks here. Two peaks which basically reflect the presence of uh, Andreev bound states within, uh, within the, uh, the, 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 the weak link. So we have two bound states, which then, of course, uh, all width open up when increasing the, when increasing the, uh, the, the coupling with, with the probe. So basically, the, uh, the coupling is giving width to, the, uh, to these uh, bound states uh, up to, to up to here where everything is open. And, uh, and for example, when you increase, <coughs> when you increase the length, what you will find is a figure like that. So there are, there are going to be many uh, under the bound states. So this is what, this actually, actually these are uh, under the bound states which, uh, which are being. I say, I'm saying this because there are, uh, there are remaining effects on the, on the, uh, so, uh, on the uh, thermoelectricity. So, the, the, the thermal conductance is less interesting, maybe because there's uh, nothing between uh, up to uh, energy or uh, epsilon ds, of course, because uh, in order to have uh, a, a, a heat current in, in superconductor, all the heat, heat current is simply due to excitation. So you have to have energies above, above delta. So this is what uh, you, um, you, you expect. There are no features coming from under the states, because under the states don't play any role here in the in, in, in thermal conductivity. Uh, okay, so here there's this, uh, uh, one can, uh, one can uh, switch on some, uh, some phase difference, and uh, this is the effect. We see that there is more effect when, uh, when also uh, a magnetic flux plus a pure phase difference is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is switched on. But we'll see later the effect of a, of a uh, um, a phase difference. So now we calculate what something which is measured, which is usually measured, which is the uh, this, this thermal power, the, the Seebeck coefficient defined as I defined in, uh, a few slides ago, which is simply given by this ratio here of uh, of um, matrix um, of uh, Onsager coefficients, and one find that uh, so this is uh, uh, thermal power for different temperatures. One find that this uh, Thermal power is, is larger for smaller temperature, re reaching quite uh, high values. So in this case, is something like 50 microvolt per Kelvin. And has got this, this kind of dependence with respect to EDS. So there's a peak around EDS divided by delta equal to one, which is, uh, which is less broadened for small, uh, small temperature. Here is the same plot, but uh, against also some uh, presence of some uh, phase, uh, phase difference. Uh, okay, so I, maybe I've got till five minutes. Uh, 
So what we saw is that uh, it's the helical nature which gives rise to this thermoelectricity. It's basically this, uh, this fact here. So th this behavior here, the fact that you can have uh, um, holes and co hot holes and cold electrons in, in this case give rise to thermoelectricity. So the helical nature is, is, uh, is crucial for, for this effect to, to occur. Uh, there's no dependence on, in the, in the linear response, there's no dependence on this TM also beyond the response. There's no dependence on the temperature of, uh, of uh, the normal probe. So all the effect is just simply due to the difference in temperature of the two, of the two su uh, superconductors, delta T. Uh, or also, there's no dependence on the position of, uh, uh, of the probe. So this is, uh, this is true in an, in, a, in, an ideal, in an ideal system. So uh, I probably won't have time, but when you some introduce some, some, uh, some asymmetries between left and right, this is, this is not true uh, anymore. So uh, one can also ask, uh, just switch off completely the, the Doppler shift effect, but one somehow imposes a, a, a phase difference between the two superconductors. And in this case, also one find uh, thermoelectric uh, effects, but in this case, due to Andreev uh, interference, so, so to, to resonant processes occurring uh, among, uh, uh, within, within the weak link. And so the interesting thing is that uh, one can find a very, it's very easy, it's very simple to write the current uh, in the probe, because it's simply given by a contribution which is given by, uh, which is controlled by the, this, distribution function in the, in the lead. So this is relative to particles, this is relative to, to holes. And another contribution uh, uh, controlled by the distribution in the superconductors. <coughs> and uh, when uh, Vn, so when there is no voltage applied to the, uh, to the probe, this term here goes away and one remains with this term here only, which is given by, which is controlled by the different uh, temperature difference between the, the superconductor, which is basically uh, controlled by uh, this quantity Q, which gives, this is the probability for a, a particle to go from the left superconductor to the normal probe, and the particle to go from the superconductor, uh, so actually a Andreev uh, process for a particle to, to go to, into a, a, to a hole. In any case, they are describing basically resonant processes occurring uh, within uh, the weak link. And, uh, uh, and uh, also this Q is very simple form, which is, you see, the length of the weak link enters uh, uh, through this, uh, this, uh, this cosine function, as well as, of course, uh, Oslot phi. Everything is controlled also by the transmission of the, uh, um, so the coupling of, uh, of the probe. And, uh, and for example, one find this generalized uh, this uh, Onsager uh, um, symmetry relation. So this is, this is not, not important now. Um, okay, <coughs> so if one plots L, L12, so the thermoelectric uh, uh, coefficient, so this L12 against the length and against the, uh, the phase difference, one find, of course, some uh, uh, periodic uh, dependence just given by the formula I I just uh, showed you. So maybe what is in interesting here is the fact that uh, uh, still L12, so the, the thermoelectric response <coughs> is maximized for transmission, so for coupling which, which are uh, 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 in the middle of the range somehow, so not for more, so they should be somehow in the middle of, uh, the, middle of the range. Uh, so uh, uh, the response is very much uh, um, characterized by this, uh, this oscillation in phi, but also in, uh, in length. <coughs> uh, OK, so here I'm just uh, um, um, plotting again uh, the, uh, the Seebeck coefficient, so S, the, the measurable uh, uh, thermal power against uh, uh, transmission here phase difference, and, uh, and, we'll see, and also temperature. So uh, uh, temperature between uh, uh, around half of the of critical temperature are the optimal one to see, to see uh, large value of this uh, coefficient. 
Now I'm just comparing the, the two effects where we, we have pure Doppler shift or pure uh, Andreev uh, interferometric uh, effect. And with Doppler shift, the effect is much, much, uh, much, much larger with respect to, to thermoelectricity, with respect to the uh, Andreev interferometry. So I still have a few minutes or? Uh? OK, so no, so just want, want, uh, what was remaining was the effect of uh, asymmetries, more realistic uh, effects, and some estimates about the, some estimates about the um, heat generation and e efficiency of uh, neat engines of, uh, of this kind. So the main message uh, I want to convey is this uh, 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 therm thermotic effect induced by a magnetic flux, which is uh, very much dependent on the helical nature of, uh, of these uh, uh, edge states. So all what I've uh, uh, told you is basically contained in this, in this, paper, in this paper here. So thank you very much. Thank you. I already see a raised hand. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Uh, I was wondering if face slips would uh, look different in such a system because a face slip would correspond to voltage, and as we learned yesterday, it also corresponds to heat. So if the um, helical nature of the insulator would correspond to somehow make the face slip different, or if there any effect. Yeah, um, I think so, yes. We never looked at it, but it's definitely an interesting thing to, to look at. Yeah, I have no idea what, what. Thank you. Um, I had a question because you were only looking at the um, kinetic energy of the charge carriers regarding the heat transport, if I... Uh, uh, no, yeah, I'm, I'm considering the, 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 the heat current as you, as you as the, the complete heat current just due to, to quasi particles. Yes, of course. Uh, but it's just kinetic, right? You, you neglect any um, plasmonic effect in the edge no, channel. No, no, no. It's only kinetic. Mm -hmm. And do you have an idea of the edge reconstruction of uh, topological edge states? I'm not familiar with them. In quantum Hall effect, uh, it can dominate in several regimes. So you have a lot of uh, electrostatic content in the energy of the 1D wave propagating it in the edges. Here, it's only the kinetical part. So, so if the yeah. two channels are overlapping on the same uh, position, they will be very strongly Coulomb interacting. Yes. So I guess it will change the chirality. Ah, yeah, yeah, I mean, we change many things. But I don't think uh, people have uh, studied this. Uh, yeah, I, it's even yeah. a mess in the quantum. No, 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 no because, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. But this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We still have time for one quick question in the room or in the chat. <coughs> it's always good to wait a moment until people in the chat figure out what to click on. If they There's two chat messages. Uh, they are old. Okay. Yeah, they're old. <laughs> <laughs> um, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm. Thank you.